Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, July 14th, 2020. In accordance with the mandated direction of the State Superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are closed to the public and non-essential personnel and are operating remotely until further notice in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's Building and Contracts Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website or on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 73, Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slade, would you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee? Yes, Ms. Hen. Present. Ms. Rowe. Here. Ms. Mack. Here. Mr. McMillian. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Would you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Mary Boswell McComas. Present. William Burke. Present. Christina Byers. Christina Byers. Michael Dickerson. Present. Raquel Jones. Present. Maria Lowry. Maria Lowry. George Roberts. Present. Brian Scriven. Present. Monique Wheatley Phillip. Monique Wheatley Phillip. Michael Zarchin. Michael Zarchin. Margaret Ann Howie. <coughs> Margaret Ann Howie. Uh, Renard Adams. Present. Barbara Burnop. Present. Pretty Dixit. Present. James Corns. Present. Everything's okay. We're just emailing. Brian Embriali. Present. Amalio Nieves. Present. Charles Patillo. Present. George Saris. Present. Melissa Whitstead. Present. Jess Grimm. Present. Karen Levenstein. Joanne Calvert sitting in for Karen Levenstein. Thank you. Merrill Plate. Here. Kenny West. Present. Kimberly Kerr. Present. Deb Somerville. Deb Somerville. Jennifer Drury. Present. And Joanne English Calvert. Present. Thank you. And Andy Nussbaum, I'm here as well. Thank you. Are there any additional staff participating in today's meeting that were not mentioned earlier? Michelle Stansberry from Title I. 
Thank you. Great. Thank I believe, you. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you, Ms. Slade. You're welcome. At this time, I would like to call Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit to present contracts one through 16. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the first uh, first item is LKO 40318, Learning Management Software System. This is a consent to the assignment of this contract from Schoology Incorporated to Power School Group, LLC. This was the only awarded vendor on the original contract approved by the board in January 2018. Thank you. Board members, are there any questions? Uh, I have one. Ms. Rowe? I would like to uh, know why it is. Is this a, a business name change or are we switching vendors? And what research has been done into the new vendor? So the this is not a change in vendors. It is a corporate acquisition of Schoology, um, which we've had for uh, over two years. And um, uh, what was the second part of your question? Um, what research has been done into the new vendor? Uh, well, we use the new vendor for two other applications. Um, and as with every contract, uh, we do a check with the Maryland State Department of Assessments and Taxations to make sure they are in good standing uh, with the state of Maryland and licensed to do business in Maryland, as well as a um, uh, a background, um, a standard uh, check on the corporation's uh, good standing. So are we expecting there to be any uh, difference in the delivery of Schoology? Is the product staying the same and it's just the corporate change or are they changing the product? The product is not changing at this time, um, and I'll let Mr. Corns add to that if he has anything. Ms. Rowe, there won't be any change to Schoology. Um, our contract term is uh, till um, uh, January of uh, 2023, um, and those terms and conditions will be honored, um, and then we'll, we'll take our learning management back out to RFP as we did when we procured Schoology. They simply were purchased by PowerSchool, which is a, um, a major product provider in um, learning management systems and student information systems, as well as uh, special education systems. Uh, so we have confidence in the um, corporation itself, but uh, our, our Schoology um, uh, instance is not shifting at all. Okay, so we shouldn't see any interruption or lowered quality in the delivery of services. My main concern is that we're doing all of this digital learning right now, and we're really dependent on this platform. So uh, I want to make sure that, it, that this transition or this shift isn't going to create problems for us. And what, what can we do if it does create problems for us? Uh, we, we are... Um are constantly monitoring and in contact with our Schoology contacts. Um, there's still a subdivision of, of um, power schools. So we haven't seen anything. Um, um, we haven't seen anything that would lead us to believe that we would experience any uh, degradation in the system. They're not planning on migrating to new servers or anything. It is simply um, the corporation has been uh, purchased by uh, power school but the unit itself is still functioning in the same manner. So I wouldn't expect us to see anything that would even remotely cause us to, to have an interruption in service. Um, they, they have been providing a, uh, our digital learning uh, throughout the summer and throughout um, our COVID experience um, in a, in a, with a lot of fidelity. And, and so 
I'm not I'm not expecting that we would need to even worry about it. And and Ms. Rowe, this is something I can speak to as well. When Power School announced the acquisition of Schoology, I was pleased to see that they also announced um, investment into the product itself, including expanding the functionality and some of their integrations um, with Google, I think was one that they mentioned specifically. So I see this as only a positive for us in terms of um, product experience for our learners. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Hen? Yes, Ms. Mack? I have a question. Um, is there any change needed with our student data privacy agreement? Ms. Mack, this is... Ms. Mack, this is yes. Mr. Embriali. So we do have a student data privacy agreement already in place with the other products that are used by PowerSchool. And um, we will just need to ensure that Schoology in its new corporate um, name with PowerSchool um, also has the same uh, data privacy expectations. But there's there should be no issues with that transition because, again, we already have two additional products that are with PowerSchool. So when you say transition, though, will will there be a formal agreement that's signed? Is it just a check? I mean, what assures it? Well, they have to. They they would sign the data sharing agreement when okay. when it comes to the when it comes to the transition of this this process right here. And George can tell me if I'm wrong, but this process right here, if the board approves, would allow then the school system to pay. Power School for the use of Schoology, but we would work with our law office to ensure that um, the data sharing agreement is signed by Power School for Schoology. Thank you very much. Thank you. Board members, any other questions? Okay, well, Ms. Mack um, asked the question that I had, so thank you, Mr. Imbriali, for confirming that Power School will, in fact, sign the student data privacy agreement. So that's that's good to hear. Um, okay, thank you very much. I think we're ready to move okay. on. Okay, the, the next report. next item is JNI 740-16, officiating services for interscholastic sports. Uh, this is a contract modification to extend the uh, current contract for athletic officiating for the Office of Athletics. Approval is requested to extend the contract for three months with the eight awarded vendors approved by the board in July 2015. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding um, how at school athletics will be conducted. Uh, these vendors are, are local organizations with not a lot of resources and we felt it was best under these conditions to extend this contract um, for the through the fall um, not knowing what may transpire okay. thank you board members questions hearing none Thank you. Next item, please. Okay. The uh, next item I have is JNI 736-15, private duty and substitute nurses. Uh, this uh, contract modification will provide for the continued private duty and substitute nursing services for the Office of Health Services. Approval is requested to extend the contract for four months with four awarded vendors approved by the board in July 2015. And here again, uh, there's a particular um, market uh, shortage for nursing services uh, that's directly related uh, to the pandemic. And uh, we feel it's uh, in our best interest to extend this contract under the uh, the current pricing uh, for four more months. Okay. Mr. Sarris, we have a different item number three. Oh, 
I may have skipped one. We have MWE 822-20, instructional materials. Okay. Let me find that. Although we could certainly come back to that. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure where I missed it here. Um, is this for the Title I program? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. If you just bear with me here. Take your time. sure where I went wrong. I George, think it was this just, is Melissa. Do you want me to project it on the screen? With no, it, it just didn't. Okay, I've got it. Uh, sorry for that. Okay, this is a new contract for instructional materials for the Office of Title I. Approval is requested for a two-month contract with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $400,000. Uh, this will be funded uh, by the Title I grant and um, it is an expedited procurement as a result of the need to uh, provide these materials for the Title I uh, summer program. And so in lieu of doing a, an advertised bid, we received uh, quotes from several vendors uh, and we compared uh, compared their pricing uh, with each other with and with what other resources uh, we were aware of in the marketplace and made a, are making a recommendation uh, based on both the lowest price and the ability to deliver these materials in in short order. Okay. Thank you. And good afternoon. Dr. Wisted is here with us. Yes. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, I have several questions, but I'll open it up to the committee for their questions first. Hi, this is Lisa Mack. Ms. Mack? Um, I remember when this contract was covered in the curriculum committee meeting, but since we have more information now, I just have a few questions. Um, how are have we identified the children who were who will participate in this learning opportunity? Do we know that we have 9,000 students? And um, or, or are we going to wait until we've identified the students and that will determine how, to whom these packages will be delivered? So this is with said the program is currently happening so we do know uh, all the children um, they were identified before the order was made and um, they were delivered already to the family so this was one of those expedited um, uh, contracts as George was saying um, because we had to make the order in order for the children to get it in time for the summer program to start. These are the the instructional materials that went um, to the children's houses so that they, things like math activities and STEM related 
activities, just like our Title I program, if it was live, they would be engaging in those programs. We needed to send the materials to them so that they could do those same activities at home. And um, I, I see on here students will use manipulative materials during instructional and self-directed learning. So this part of this is with teachers providing the guidance, is that correct? Correct. Our extended learning opportunity, there is live teaching happening um, virtually with the students. Right, right. And Dr. Mm -hmm. Wistead, so since we've done this, how many kits did we actually deliver? Hi. Sure. This ahead, is Michelle, Michelle's the exact number. <laughs> it's six, there are approximately 6,400 um, students participating in the program. And that's the number we actually sent home. We also sent materials to teachers so that they could equally um, have the same materials that students have. So there were about 400 teachers that received the materials as well. So did we buy 9,000 kits um, and we, we've used 6,800? Am, am I understanding you correctly? Or we, we purchased just what we needed? We purchased just what we needed. 9,000 was the maximum we would need if full enrollment um, took place at every school location. And since we did not have full enrollment, we only ordered for what we actually needed. Great. Thank you very much for that additional information. You're welcome. Thank you. Board members, other questions? I, I did have a few. Um, I'm curious about our relationship with Future Makers. It seems like a, a fabulous organization from what I've researched um, minimally. Could you tell us more about them and our partnership, if we have one, um, with them? What is BCPS's relationship with Future Makers um, in terms of what products or services we are using from them, um, if we plan to expand the program, and if you could describe that in a little more detail for the committee. Michelle, I don't know if you have additional information, but my understanding is because this is because we had to do a contract with them, we have not used it before. But Michelle, did we use it for a different contract? Um, not in the summer. We have not, and not through Title I. I know that we were very excited about Future Makers and what they had to offer. We are using what they call snack packs. They are weekly um, STEM projects for students to do. So every week they're doing a new STEM project. They have other items that we are equally as interested in, but we wanted to start off small to kind of see how things went. The results are fabulous. The children are very excited. We have wonderful pictures and tweets, and there's so many great things happening, and it, it's making our hearts smile that we're making children smile in the summer when they have spent so much time away from their friends. They're still feeling connected and excited about summer learning. So anything um, that we can do to extend the relationship as we continue to monitor it throughout the summer would be amazing for us. It'd be great. And and beyond the summer, if we're seeing these types of Absolutely. Results. Absolutely. So I, I would love it if the board could be kept um, in the loop as to, to how that's going and future plans with them, because like I said, the little I've seen seems incredible. So, okay. Great. Thanks. School Schools will have culminating events. So we'll ask them to invite you all where children will so showcase the products that they've made. So that we'll extend great. that invitation. Thank you very much. That'd be great. You're welcome. Okay. That's all I had. Board members, any last questions? Okay. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Uh, the next item, JNI 736-15, private duty and substitute nurses. This contract modification will provide for continued private duty and substitute nursing services for the Office of Health Services. Approval is requested to extend the contract for four months with four awarded vendors approved by the board in July 2015. Um, as I started to say previously, 
we feel this is in our best interest given the state of emergency that has had a particular demand for nursing services. And uh, since we have four, four available vendors under this contract with pricing in place, uh, we're recommending that we uh, continue it for four months at this time. Thank you. Board members, questions? Hearing none, thank you. Next item. Okay. Uh, so uh, the next item, just to be sure, uh, that I have is JMI 618-17. Is that what everybody else is looking at, great. Uh, this is specialty paper and envelopes. This contract modification will provide for the continued purchase of assorted specialty paper and envelopes for the Office of Copy and Print Services. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $220,000, bringing revised total contract spending authority to $800,000 $70,000 with three awarded vendors approved by the board in March 2017. Mr. Terry, so at what point would a contract like this be um, rebid or put out for bid? So if this was a five-year contract, we're in year three. So uh, as long as the vendors are performing, we would probably not rebid this until uh, sometime next uh, next year to okay. be ready for March of 22. So sometime in fiscal 20 uh, in 2021 we would be rebidding this. Okay. And and so what we're presenting here is just um, one year of uh, spending authority based on the average uh, spending authority of $203,000. And um, so that, that doesn't have a bearing on the length of the contract in this case. We, we're just taking this and some other contracts one year at a time. Okay. Thank you. That That's very helpful. Well, we did misread that understanding it was a five-year extension so my notes were incorrect but that that's helpful information so thank you um board members other questions okay next item okay the next item is uh jmi 618 Dash one eight information technology staffing services. This uh, is also a contract modification to provide for continued staffing services for the Department of Information Technology. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $4 million, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $11 million with 58 awarded vendors approved by the board in July 2018. And uh, here again, this uh, based on um, last year's spending of about $4.2 million, we are just presenting this for one additional year of spending authority. The contract remains in place until July of 2023. Board members, questions? Mr. Saris, this is Lisa Mack. Yes. Um, why, why would we be doing this now? Um, well, we Does need- we have a contract that runs through 2023. Well, we've we've spent just under six million dollars, and so we ex we would expect uh, under the current spending authority of seven million that we would exceed 
our spending authority sometime during the fiscal year. And uh, so that's why we are bringing the contract at this time. Okay, I'm sure I have another question. I just can't think of it. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Any other questions before I have some questions of my own? Okay. Um, Mr. Saris, mine are along the lines of, of Ms. Max. So I, I'm curious as to the original spending authority that was requested, given that if my numbers are correct, 83% of that spending authority was spent in the first two years of the contract. Is that something you're able to speak to? Yeah, and that was the decision at, of the superintendent at the time to uh, continue to um, incrementalize the spending authority that we were requesting at any one time. Um, you know, obviously, in a, with a five-year contract and and forty-four million dollars a year in spending, we might have initially asked you for much more. But at the time, we had an interim superintendent um, who was moderating her requests and in some sense were continuing here by going one year at a time with spending authority. And, and that makes sense. Um, the concern that I want to allay is that we are not, that that doesn't represent an overrun on project costs. And that's something that this board does not have insight into. So I want to ensure that what we're not seeing is that those two don't equate. Does right. That makes sense. Well, we're not yeah. an 83% overrun in our IT project costs. Yes, that is not the case. Um, I can assure you that we did not receive an increase in our maintenance of effort budget uh, for this particular line item. Um, so we'll be living within um, our budgetary constraints um, as well as looking for ways to possibly minimize uh, or shrink this cost going forward. Okay. And I know that we, we made some pretty aggressive um, reductions across the board with um, contracted services. So Yes. I'm curious as to why the spending authority was increasing when our budgeted amount for contracted services is actually decreasing. Given right. The well, yeah, so we did limit this. We reduced last year's planned spending by $200,000. So that's at the direction of superintendent. So we'll continue to work on this. Thank you. Other questions, board members? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's make sure I get the next item right here. Um, so I've got. The uh, JME. 502-20 automatic vehicle location or AVL. This is a new single source contract for an automated vehicle location system for the Office of Transportation. Approval is requested for a two-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $350,000. Um, we've used the term single source here because uh, last year it was a cooperative piggyback contract with Baltimore County government. And having um, installed this equipment in their vehicles and in ours, they decided that there's, there's no short-term change in vendors that would contemplate replacing this equipment. So they named the company uh, a, a single source vendor and we are uh, doing the same thing in this instance. Okay. 
So it's it's my understanding that the equipment provided in the next um, contract we'll be talking about JME 50320 um, includes vehicle location functionality. Um, so I'm curious as to whether this equipment will still be in use if we do approve that contract, which is the automatic school bus stop arm um, and bus safety video monitoring system and the implications of that. If we do end up approving both, will this equipment still be in use or will that system replace this and eliminate the need for this contract? Is that something you That's could- something I like Mr. Patillo or one of his staff to respond to. Good afternoon, Ms. Hen. This is Jess Grimm. Um, love to respond to that question. Thank you. Um, okay. So this uh, this contract request is actually to extend ABL on our school buses for a period of one year because the contract ends at the end of this month, and it will complete the installation that has really just begun on our White Fleet. And so the White Fleet contract will be for the full two years but we uh, plan on phasing out the bus ABL because as you said, um, we may have some other equipment that's pending that will serve as a, as a GPS for us. Okay, and, and ti- thank you for that. And timing wise then, this would be, uh, let me pull up the contract. This is for one year, I believe. The, the contract is for, for two years, Ms. Hen, because that keeps us going, as I said, with our white fleet. But the, the spending authority would only include one year for our school buses and then to continue on with our white fleet. So the timing is basically so we can continue a continuity of service with GPS tracking that we have now if we were to go to a different option in the future. Okay. And we, we only spend what we need, so it, it provides continuity, like you said. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. That's all I had. Board members, other questions? Ms. Hen, I have a question for Mr. Graham, Dr. Graham. Mr. McMillian? While we're talking tracking vehicles, I'm just curious, do some bus drivers, are they allowed to in between the morning and the evening runs to take those buses back toward their homes? Or do they have to park them in the, take them back to the lots and then get their own vehicles to go home? So the response to that question, Mr. McMillian, our drivers should not be taking those those vehicles for any uh, personal use. Um, however, depending on the, the timing between a morning and a midday or a midday and an afternoon run, or if the, vehicle, if the uh, school bus driver is conducting a field trip, um, you know, there, there may be a, a time where they, they stop off. Sometimes our drivers park in a shopping center, for example, um, because it is uh, on the way back or to a, to a location that they're servicing. Um, but no, it should not be taken home at any time. Um, as a personal vehicle would be. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Grimm. Any other questions, board members? Okay, hearing none. Um, next okay. item. Uh, next item, uh, JME 503-20, automatic school bus stop arm and bus safety video monitoring system. This is a new cooperative contract for the automatic school bus stop arm and bus safety video monitoring systems for the Office of Transportation. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority to be funded by Baltimore County government. Mr. Sears, could you speak to the procurement um, process for this? particular contract recommendation? Yes, so uh, there were a number of uh, jurisdictions in the state that used this vendor. Um, We looked at their contracts and uh, elected to use the Howard County as the basis for our agreement. Um, It was uh, 
publicly advertised and bid and competitively awarded. And uh, we do, uh, we perform due diligence on all of these cooperative agreements. And also, as I mentioned, we make sure that the vendor is in good standing with the Maryland State Department of Assessments, Department of Licensing. We do a Dun and Bradstreet background check on the vendor as well. Okay. We, we found it to be an, to meet all of our uh, requirements to present. Okay. And then even though we did um, a cooperative agreement with Howard County, we still had to negotiate our own MOU. Is that correct? With the correct. Department? Our and that's and that's been negotiated with Baltimore County government, but it obviously references uh, this vendor, and and we will also with board approval we will begin to negotiate a a uh, black letter contract with the vendor uh, that will start with all the terms of the Howard County RFP, and then. Uh, make any allowable uh, additions to meet our our law office's requirements, and um, if there are options available to decide which, if any, uh, are appropriate. Okay. So, what were the advantages of using Howard County's contract then? It sounds like we had an awful lot of work to to do on our own. Were there advantages to using? Well, uh, the the advantage is that um, in this case, there seemed to be um, a matter of timing needed to, to put something in place for the start of the school year. Um, it's something that uh, Baltimore County government has worked with us on and they were also uh, anxious they had to pass associated legislation. Um, we had to do the MOU. So there are lots of moving pieces in order to try and get this implemented in time for the school year. I'm not sure where we stand on that timeline, but um, it was basically uh, uh, to meet the, the timetable. To meet the timetable. Okay. Yeah because um, I, I listened in on those discussions. They were fascinating when the county council was discussing the legislation leading up to this. And um, Mr. West had spoken to the fact that the system had been investigating this for some time and working on um, leading up to this. So I was curious as to why the need for a piggyback, if this is something that has been in the works, I think he said for a few years now in looking into it. Um, that was one of the questions that the council members had posed specifically to, um, to mm -hmm. Mr. West about how did this come to be? How did we arrive at this vendor specifically? And they were interested in, in the procurement process. So I knew that was, that was one concern, I believe, in Montgomery County around their procurement and why they chose to go the, the cooperative um, route as well, considering mm -hmm. You know the heavy lifting. Um, right. Attorney General raised that. Ms. Hen, can I add to that? Yes, Ms. Matt. I guess um, my question about this is: is the timing um, to the point that you just made? If this is something that we have been considering, I, I guess what I'm I'm trying to get clear in my mind: why has it suddenly become something? that we tr need to get in for this school year, because if we put it out to the bid process, um, we, might, we might get a contract with more favorable terms. For example, um, I was looking at some information that said that uh, Montgomery County Public Schools spent 750, 000, 50, actually it says 750 million, hold on, sorry. Seven, they spent a lot of money, hold on, um, $750,000 from its operating budget, and while the county has received $10 million in ticket revenue, 
neither the county or the public school system has received any ticket proceeds from the program. And I, those are the kind of things I would like to see resolved with this vendor or any vendor before we enter into any type of contract like this. Thank you, Ms. Mack. And, and Dr. Graham has his hand up, so I'm going to turn it over to him. Uh, Ms. Mack, thank you for your for your question, and, and quite frankly, for the opportunity to to speak to um, to that particular issue. So um, we've learned a lot. Um, actually, districts across the state, including Montgomery County, have learned a lot from their initial contract back in 2016, with um, which what was then called Force Multiplier. Um, Bus Patrol has purchased the intellectual property of. of force multiplier solutions, um, as you're well aware in, in some of the literature that you have. And um, we have, through our process in, in looking at this, and as has Howard County and uh, Carroll County, and in the subsequent contract with Montgomery County, actually address those gaps. So the one that you're speaking of, in, in the initial contract in Montgomery County, there was no provision that the, um, that the that the revenue that was generated as a result of these tickets would be used to actually pay the police officers that were monitoring the program. So since that time, the subsequent contracts again have addressed that issue. So um, the contract that, that I believe we will be negotiating, and I don't wanna speak out of turn, will make will ensure basically through our law office that we that we will not be paying out any of those types of funds so those nuances have been addressed um i just want to want to make a comment so there there are um two real vendors in this space and montgomery's um sorry howard county's um rfp bears this out so there's two real players in this space and the vendor that we're recommending has actually won 100% of the competitively bid RFPs in this space for the last two years. And they've got over 90% of the stop arm enforcement business in the country. They're the only ones that, that really provide with what we call an equity approach. So there's, there's two major players and that equity approach is, is full fleet. So when we're speaking about our 1,050 buses um, that can be on the on the road with our spares. Um, we're talking about outfitting fitting the whole fleet. The other vendor in the space actually takes a different approach, where they only outfit between 10 and 25 percent of the district's buses, and that's how they do their stop arm enforcement. And as a safety initiative first, um, and an equity issue, we, we have real problems with that. Um, and, and so with that other vendor, the upfront costs are much more significant to the school system. Um, this vendor, Bus Patrol, is, is the premier vendor in this space. Okay, I have a follow-up question to that. Thank you very much. So what is your understanding, and I'll address it to both you and Mr. Saris, of any cost that BCPS at any time will be expected to pay as it relates to this program? Zero. Yeah, uh, we don't plan for any uh, cash costs. I think uh, Dr. Grimm will uh, be able to explain the impact on his staff because um, we're going to administer the program. So I think in terms of management, uh, time and effort, there will be some costs. But my understanding is that the the ultimate contract will entail no cost to the board, uh, just as we've portrayed here in the exhibit. OK, and is... unfortunately, I can't find it right now, but Something I read, um, I guess when this contract was first presented, stated that as a result of contracting with this company, an actual school board um, ended up spending a lot of money and that they did not have, that they did not expect to spend. And I need to know contractually and legally where is the language that would say no matter what happens, no matter how many, no matter how few people 
attempt to pass school buses, we, BCPS, other than some management cost, will not be liable to reimburse this company for its cost. And Ms. Mack, if I may speak to that, thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, you are correct. There were actually um, there was actually a district um, that I'm aware of down in Texas that had that problem. As you noted, um, also uh, Montgomery County had an outlay of, of funds as well. As I said, those contracts are um, they were originally generated uh, four to five years ago um, with. A, a, the, the predecessor or a different company than uh, Bus Patrol. Since then, uh, districts have learned from those examples and have designed those contracts to do exactly what you said. Um, your first question, just to follow up with what Mr. Sarah said, um, my staff will need to devote some time and energy uh, to, to training and, and to some of the other facets of this. Um, but actually, um, we should save some cost from my staff's point of view, um, because right now we manage uh, the installation of all the cameras that we have, and we take care of all the, the say on cameras that we have in our fleet. And if we were, uh, if the board were to approve this contract and we were to go with this vendor, um, the vendor is, is responsible for the cost of this. So the assurance that you're looking for would be in the, the contract that Mr. Saris noted that would um, follow the board's approval. As you said, you've, you've provided uh, zero spending authority. So uh, uh, Mr. Saris, correct me if I'm wrong, that means we can't spend any money as a result of this contract. Is that correct? That, that is correct. If something were to occur that's not anticipated at this time, we would have to come back to the board. But I, I do not foresee that the contract will be reviewed by purchasing, by me, by the Office of Law, by transportation, and ultimately it will be signed by the board chair. And I know that she reads these documents diligently before signing them. So I don't expect anything to slip by all of us. Okay, well, that's all of my questions. Thank you very much. Ms. Han. Ms. Han, Ms. Han, I have a question. Sure, before we continue, I want to call the attention to the time. Um, we are scheduled to be in closed session at five and still have several contracts to get through. So if we don't get through everyone's questions on this contract, I know that it is of interest to the full board. We will have time in open session this evening to discuss it. So I want to assure board members you will have that opportunity. But um, Mr. McMillian, I, I heard you um, request to speak and then Ms. Rao. I understand that there's a zero contract spending authority by Baltimore County Public Schools, but you hear people talk about a, an $11 million expenditure. My understanding is the $11 million is for the equipment that the company is putting into our bus. Is, is that correct? So, Mr. McMillian, um, I'll field that question. Actually, that $11 million figure is, is incorrect because that's not the cost of the equipment. That's actually, that $11 million figure is actually the projected revenue um, that, that this company, um, based on their experience and um, in looking at, at similar um, jurisdictions, believe that they will generate in a normal year from us. So I don't have the exact figures on the equipment cost, but it is less than that. And um, I don't want to get in the details of the of the revenue sharing, but there would be a revenue sharing component of this where the, the company gets paid back um, for the equipment that it installs and, and purchases up front. And then the county receives the other parts of the revenue that by Comar, it has to be earmarked toward a pedestrian safety program. Okay, and, 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 we'll, and so, Rod, just real, real quick, when we reference the county, we're talking about county government, not, not Baltimore County school system. Just wanted to clarify that. Go ahead. Be uh, uh, and that was my question. So a, a gentleman this morning in the Baltimore County government mentioned to me that the Baltimore County government is paying for the equipment that's being installed into our buses. That information's inaccurate, correct? That is right. inaccurate. 
So this company is footing the bill for all the equipment that they are installing on each of our buses. Correct. And it's not costing Baltimore County Public Schools or the Baltimore County government any money, correct? Correct. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Rao? Ms. Hen, in light of time, I'll reserve my questions for the full board since we're going to discuss it there anyway. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, the last item I have before we move to Mr. Dixit is GDA 307-20, new food items. This is a new com competitively bid contract for several new food items for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Approval is requested for an 11 month contract with four recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $608,000. Board members, any questions? Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Saris. Okay. Pete, you you do much faster work than I do, so. I'm going to try it, George. You did a very good job today. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, um, Mr. Dixit. We've left you all of four minutes, sir. Okay, yes. I'll try. The next contract I have is JMI 636-17 for corrugated card, cardboard boxes. These boxes are used for packing. The original contract was in 2017 in the amount of $250,000. We are requesting a change order for $69,335. These boxes are used for packing for te by teachers and when the schools are constructed for moving teachers material to the new schools. Back in 2017, we had no idea that the construction program is going to be so vast. So we have used a lot more boxes. So your approval is requested for the change in amount. Thank you. Any questions? I have one. Ms. Rowe? Mr. Dixit, we hire moving companies sometimes to move classrooms. Do these moving companies that we hire not include packing and boxing materials? Uh, this, th these boxes are used for teachers to pack their stuff and leave in the classroom. If we, buy, if we get the services of a moving company, the cost of the boxes are included. But this is, this is when we move it ourselves, when the teachers are going to pack and leave it for movers to come and pick it up and move to a new school. Okay, thank you. I have a very quick question. Um, do, do we reuse these boxes or do they get broken down and go out into recycling? Do you know, Mr. Dixit? It, it, in most of the cases, they get broken down because uh, it is not cost effective to reuse this. They only cost a couple of dollars and uh, in the condition they are in and the logistics of getting them back for reuse will cost more than the cost of the box. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next item, sir. The next item I have is JMI 61117 for school locker repairs and installation. Uh, the request is for a change order in the amount of $445,000 for lockers. Back in 2016, when the board approved this contract, we were primarily using it for maintenance and repair. We have also used this. Uh, in the past for capital projects. So the additional amount is needed to take care of those costs. And I also want to assure uh, the board that just because we have the spending authority in this case, we are not going to use all of that money if we don't have to use that. Okay, that, that was a question with, with this. So um, given that our contract spending authority to date for almost four years is 595,000. I was curious as to why the spending authority being requested for 16 months is 649,000. So. Because, because there are projects that, that we have in the pipeline that we are expecting. Associated with new construction? Yes. Okay, that answers that, thank you. Other questions, board members? Okay. Next item. 
The next contract is JMI 616-17 for stone, mulch, topsoil, and associated material. The request is to modify the amount by 83,421 because of the reduction in site uh, projects in the capital program, we have been attempting to do a lot of site work in-house and this additional cost, the material, will, they will purchase the material that is needed to do in-house project. Thank you. Questions, board members? None. Next item. Okay, the next contract I have is JMI 610-18 for wood floor finishing replacement, repairs, and relining. The request is to add $850,000 to the original contract in, in the amount of $500,000. And the reason is somewhat similar that we talked about in one of the earlier contracts, we were using it for basic maintenance, repair, and minor replacement project. We are also using these uh, contracts for capital projects or for aging school projects for those kind of things. So we have schools in the pipeline where we need additional money for. Okay. Other questions, board members? Okay, hearing none, moving on. Okay, the next contract is JMI 601-19 is for replacement of Berkshire Elementary School Package 9E painting. As you know, a lot of our construction contract had to be rescheduled, slowed down in some cases to meet the timeline because of the pandemic requirement. What it has done is in some cases, because of the compression of time for contractors and because of need to accelerate the work in the limited amount of time, we need more money. We need additional labor to complete the project still to meet the same timeline. So one of the projects impacted in Berkshire is painting. It has exceeded the contingency that board approved. It's the request is to to increase the contingency for $71,000 uh, so that we can still do the painting within the time allocated for that job. I do want to share with the board that while this contract has exceeded contingency, this is a small contract in a total project of more than $40 million, and all of all of the other projects so far are still within the contingency. I, I did have a question regarding this. If if you could speak specifically to why the painting um, would result in in this amount, um, the the increased cost of seventy one thousand is that something you expect to use the full contingency on? And that that what, 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 what yes, the answer is yes. That we intend to use it. So if board approved 10% of the original 250,000 before, this will cost more than 10%, and this is the additional cost. The reason it will cost more is that if we had four weeks of time for painting in the original contract, now because all of the other contracts have been delayed, the painter only has a couple of weeks to paint. In order to do that, three or four weeks worth of work in two weeks, he has to put overtime. So we call it acceleration of contract. When you do that because of no fault of contractor, then we have to pay him for the additional labor cost. And this is what it's going to do. And we are still trying to meet the original schedule based on those. That's points. right, that's right. Okay, thank you. Board members, other questions? Hearing none, next item please. The next item we have is JME 501-20. This is for the chiller replacement at Fullerton Elementary School. It's one of the projects that board had approved under the capital program. So the bids have come in. Uh, I would like to 
uh, draw the attention of board to look at the number of bids and the difference in cost between the lowest and the highest bidder. Uh, this, this, in this particular case, uh, if I have all the bids here, the lowest bidder that we are recommending is $575,000 as compared to the highest, which is $861,000. What it did indicates that uh, we are getting a good bid price. It is within budget. And in these market conditions, there could be a gap of as much as 30, 40 percent more uh, as compared to the lowest bidder. So it's a difficult, it is very difficult for our construction and engineering and design folks to come up with a cost estimate. So you will see bids that are higher than what we estimated. This one is lower than what we estimated. Mm -hmm. Questions? Yeah, thank you. Next item. The next item is not a contract. It is a memorandum of understanding, MOU-90421. It is for Colgate Elementary School. Uh, some of you who are familiar with the site will know that it's a very tight site. And in order to maximize the efficiency of that site, and in order to provide a safe student drop-off, we are using part of the road that ends in cul-de-sac. We have worked with Baltimore County to, to, to be able to make that change, which will improve the safety of students and improve the delivery of supplies to cafeteria and provide some additional parking spaces for teachers and community folks. So Baltimore County wanted us to sign a memorandum of understanding saying that we'll take care of that piece of, of the road. And this is what is, this, this request is to just to do that. Okay. Board members, questions? I have a question, Mr. Penn. Mr. McMillian? Mr. Pete, I'm curious, do we have any other arrangements similar to this around uh, our other 175 schools? We have memorandum of understanding with county both ways, sometimes they use our our land we call that easement sometimes we use their land and it's either in form of mou or in a, a, a general understanding whatever our law office recommends so it is not uncommon for a site to have piece of the site that really is owned by baltimore county but we work closely together and as long as we make a commitment that we'll use this uh, part of the street and we'll take care of it it's it's in our mutual benefit thank you and i think that's my last item uh, i try to move fast i don't know if satisfied mr saris or not <laughs> thank you mr dixit thank you thank you Board members, do I have a motion to recommend items 1 through 16 to the full board for approval? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? As there is no second, um, that motion fails for lack of a second. Is there another motion? Ms. Hen, Ms. Hen can I clarify something? Oh, go ahead, Lily. Ms. Rowe? The, the stop arm contract, can we pull that out without recommendation? And would you like to then, say item eight? Yes. <clears throat> would you like to make another motion? Well, uh, I I'm, may I have a I'll I can separate out item eight. Sure. Um, do I have a motion to recommend items one through seven and items nine through sixteen to the full board for approval? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Ms. Slade, may I have a roll call vote? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Rowe? 
Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. And Mr. McMillian? Yes. The motion carries. Board members, do I have a motion to recommend item eight to the full board for approval? I'll make that motion. Okay, Mr. McMillian, may I have a second? Um, can we amend that to to forward it to the full board without a, without a recommendation? Well, that would be a different motion. So you I see. that that motion. So without a, that that motion does not carry for lack of a second. Ms. Rowe, would you like to make your motion? I move to forward uh, eight to the full board without recommendation. May I have a second? second. I heard Miss Mack, so I'm not sure. I'll second it. Second. Okay. Miss Blade, may I have a roll call vote? Yes. Miss Hen? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. And Mr. McMillian? Yes. So the motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Is there any further business? So, so Ms. Hen, this is uh, Dr. Scriven. Um, just for clarity, I understand that uh, the contract number eight is moving forward to the full board without recommendation. Um, if any of the board members so desire, can a recommendation be made later in the open session? I'm just asking a clarifying question. Sure. Um, so Dr. Scriven, the, re the item eight will move forward to the full board without the recommendation of the committee. The full board will then. Okay. That okay. Item. All right. Thank you for that clarity. You're welcome, sir. Yes, ma'am. Board members, is there any further business? Okay. I have a brief motion for consideration, which was provided to the committee in advance of this meeting. Did anyone not receive the motion in advance? Okay. I move that the general contract recommendation and the general modification recommendation forms be modified to include the additional fields listed below and that the fields be populated where applicable for future contract recommendations and modifications requiring board approval. And those fields have been provided in writing in the copy of the motion. May I have a second? Second, Lisa Mack. Ms. Slade, may I have a roll call vote? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Sorry. And Mr. McMillian? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Is there any further business? Since there's no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.